Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Arcade Game is one of the greatest beat-em-ups on the NES. While the gameplay is very simple, your turtles really only have three different attacks, which sounds extremely basic when compared to the impressive array of martial arts you can utilize in a game like Double Dragon. Still, the turtles make up for this simplicity by bringing to life all of the interesting locations and weird enemies from the popular television show. The Ninja Turtles were just everywhere after the debut of the highly successful cartoon series in 1987. While the 1984 comic book series written by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird was much more violent and intense, the cartoon series lightened up the Turtles' adventures and made them into something much more kid-friendly. The original idea was to make a show that could be used to market action figures and toys, but the merchandising potential of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles seemed limitless. So of course a video game adaptation was inevitable. The original NES game, developed by Konami and released in 1989 under their Ultra Games label, was a huge commercial success, selling around 4 million copies, making it the best-selling NES game of all time that wasn't published by Nintendo themselves. While the game sold well, many players found it extremely frustrating. The game was a solid effort and featured an innovative mechanic that allowed players to swap turtles on the fly, but it didn't feature a lot of the characters from the cartoon. Krang, one of the main antagonists, is noticeably absent. It's likely that the developers took more inspiration from the comics instead of the popular TV show. The game that really captured the magic of the cartoon was also released in 1989 by Konami, but this version could only be found in the arcade. It was a quarter-munching beat-em-up similar in style to something like Double Dragon, but with one major advantage. Four-player simultaneous play. Each of the different turtles felt distinct with unique attack animations and tons of expressions. The enemies and stories looked like they were ripped straight from the show. The graphics were leaps and bounds ahead of what was available on the home consoles of the time. Not only did the arcade game feature Krang, but it also had Baxter Stockman and General Trag. It even mixed things up partway through with a fun skateboarding level. The arcade game was a massive success. Players loved jumping into the world of the Turtles, and allowing for four players simultaneous play meant that each machine could make four times as much money. This would become the blueprint for many other successful arcade games, including The Simpsons, X-Men, and of course the sequel, Turtles in Time. Fans of the Turtles always dreamt about the possibility of this awesome arcade game coming to home systems, and in 1990, Konami finally granted that wish. Many elements from the amazing arcade game had to be compromised for the NES version, with the biggest change being it could only support two players simultaneous play instead of the arcade's four. Certainly the 8-bit graphics aren't quite as good as those in the arcade, but Konami honestly did a great job of cramming all that arcade awesomeness into a tiny NES cartridge. Not only is every level from the arcade game here, they even made two more brand new levels that are exclusive to the NES version. These two new levels are some of the most interesting ones in the game, featuring unique enemy designs and brand new bosses. The NES version may not have four player simultaneous play, but it is easily one of the best games on the system to experience with a friend. All four turtles are available to choose from, and while a slow motion comparison of their attacks shows that each turtle is essentially identical, it's still nice to be able to pick your favorite and see them represented in the cutscene images between levels. One of the strangest aspects of this release was the cross promotion with Pizza Hut. The game itself has tons of Pizza Hut ads littering the background, and the package came with a coupon for a free personal pan pizza. I can't think of any older NES games that feature such blatant product placement. Later on, brands like 7up and Domino's Pizza would have entire games based on their products, but when this game came out, product placement in video games was rare. The NES game was a big success for Konami, and it even spawned a sequel, Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project in 1992. 
In modern times, gamers still have a lot of love for this classic game. It couldn't be more apparent just looking at all the hype surrounding Shredder's Revenge, a new game slated to be a spiritual successor to this one. While it is much easier to find the original arcade game on modern platforms, today's critics still appreciate the fun of the NES version. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Turtles 2 at number 41. Modern players will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. The relentless enemies will pummel you mercilessly, you have limited lives and continues, and of course Shredder still has his trademark one-hit death ray. But what if I told you the easiest way to execute your turtle's devastating special attack consistently? What if I told you secret ways to farm enemies infinitely for extra lives? And what if I told you secret tactics to easily defeat all of the game's challenging bosses? Even Shredder himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. All right, Ninja Turtles 2. Now, before we get started, if you press B-A-B-A, up, down, B-A, left, right, B-A, start on the title screen, you'll get this stage select option after you choose your turtle, and not only that, you'll have 10 extra lives. Pretty sweet. So if you just want to do a fun, casual playthrough of the game, that's a good way to do it. But we're not going to be using the code here. Nope. It's time to choose our turtle. I'm going to pick Raphael, and it looks like that building's on fire, and we gotta get April out of there. It's time to spring into action and enter scene one. As we start the game, you'll notice that each turtle has three different attacks. You can just press B to do your standard attack, which deals two damage. Jumping with A and then pressing B while you're high up in the air will do a jump kick and that deals 3 damage, but your special attack deals 4 damage. The way to do it, some people will tell you, is to press A and B at the same time, but that only seems to work some of the time. The proper way to execute the special attack is to press A and then immediately press B after it, so it's like A, B, A, B, A, B. The easiest way to do that if you have human hands instead of dog paws is to change your grip on the controller. You'll want to use your middle finger to press the A button and your index finger to press the B button. Using two different fingers may seem awkward at first, but once you get used to it, it'll make the game so much easier. Almost all of the enemies in the game have exactly 4 hit points, and our special move deals 4 hit points worth of damage. Our other attacks will take 2 hits to finish off the enemies, and when you consider that we'll need to kill literally hundreds of these guys to finish the game, we want to try to take out as many as possible in a single hit. So just keep practicing that special move, get good at it, you're going to want to use it against almost every one of these foot soldiers. Whenever you cross these open stairways, watch out for bowling balls. It'll be easier to avoid the bowling balls at the bottom of the screen because you'll have more time to see them coming. So just jump across, but then I like to come up to the top and move a bit to the left before moving to the right so that I can advance the screen a bit more and have a bit more room to work with when I'm fighting these foot soldiers. Also, you don't have to worry about getting damaged by the fire at the bottom of the screen. It's simply there for aesthetics, and it will not hurt you. More karate foot soldiers will emerge from the doors, but you want to pay more attention to the ones that are jump kicking from the side of the screen. If you're continuously doing your special attack, it's those jump kicks from the side of the screen that are most likely to damage you. It'll be very difficult for the foot soldiers to actually grab you from behind. 
these foot soldiers wearing white wheeled katana blades and they will try to jump attack you if you give them a moment. So don't do that. As soon as they appear on the screen, get them with your special attack. Of course, more karate foots will emerge from these elevators. Pro tip, never use an elevator in a fire. That is just a terrible idea. Of course, these guys are robots or something in the game. I mean, they just explode whenever you kill them. These roadkill Rodney enemies seem dangerous until you realize that if you can just get them onto the side of the screen, you can rapidly attack them with your standard attack and they won't be able to get out of it. When they're in the middle of the screen, they're dangerous though. They can get you with this electric rope attack. So just be jumping around, use your jump kicks to maneuver and try to catch one on the edge. And once they're removed, you'll hear April scream and we'll be entering the boss's room. There's a few more katana foot soldiers here, and then some machine gun wielding ones. You want to take out these guys very quickly, or they'll open fire on you. And here is Rocksteady. I'm going to show you several ways to beat Rocksteady, but if you're good at the special attack, the best way is certainly to get him in this stun lock. So you want to hit him as soon as he comes out of his capsule there. And then once he backs up, you want to move into this exact position where the back of your bandana touches the edge of that pole on the wall. It needs to be perfect. And then you just keep using your special attack and he'll go right down. So pay attention to where I am on the screen here. You want to be in that exact position for this to work. Now, this can be tricky to set up, so if you try to do it and it doesn't work, well, then you'll want to use a backup strategy, and I'm going to show you one of those right here. So, let's say we try to get him in the stun lock, it doesn't happen, we get kicked, okay. So, what we want to do is just try to get him with jump kicks, and you want to jump kick him right in like his shins or in the crotch. You don't want to jump kick him high because you'll get shot out of the air by his machine gun. The other thing you need to avoid when you're doing the jump kick strategy is to watch out for when he charges at you. Whenever Rocksteady is charging, he can't be damaged. But by doing these low jump kicks, it shouldn't be too difficult to avoid his machine gun blasts and you'll be able to take him out fast. But there is another way. You'd be surprised at how effective your basic attack is against Rocksteady. If you get up next to him and position yourself slightly lower than where his sprite is on the screen and just start smashing the attack button, you'll probably take some damage, but if you have a good bit of life, this is a very easy way to defeat him. Just go blow for blow with Rocksteady and he'll go right down. So I think that Doing the stun lock is certainly the best way, but if you can't execute that, then go for the jump kicks, or if you have a lot of life, then try to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rocksteady. Whatever you want to do, it shouldn't be too hard to beat him. So Shredder took April and we chased him out onto the streets, where we're going to fight a whole bunch more foot soldiers. Take these guys out with your special attack, and be careful as you move forward. These blue ones are knife soldiers. They will actually throw knives at you, and it's possible to actually hit an enemy with this fire hydrant if you position them in the right spot. Use your special attack to quickly take out the knife foots. You wanna wait until that guy throws the manhole cover before you try to attack him, or he'll throw it at you and you'll get hit. Continue to use your special attacks against these guys. The enemies seem to get a bit more aggressive as you move forward in the game, but the ones here are not too difficult. Now, these guys throw dynamite at you, but they don't throw it right in front of them, so if you're very close to the foot soldiers here, they won't actually fight back and can be easily defeated, but they'll try to back off when you try to get close to them, so use a jump kick to set up a good position if you have to. Over here there's going to be a pizza, so if you need to refill your health, do it right now, but only refill your health if you're very low. 
instead you want to try to take out all of the foot soldiers you can before collecting the pizza. And you actually get a point for scaring that woman on the skateboard. Once you see her though, it's time to collect the pizza because we need to move on. Some more enemies will emerge from this building, so watch out for them. Take them out with your special attack. And these foot soldiers wearing yellow will throw boomerangs at you. Now it is possible to counter the boomerangs with your attack, but you don't want to get caught by them, especially if they attack you from behind. So make sure to deal with them as quickly as possible. That one took a little bit longer than I would have liked. Keep making your way down and you want to go all the way to the bottom of the screen here so you don't get hit by these Pizza Hut advertisements. These guys are more of those boomerang soldiers and there he actually threw the boomerang so you can see what that looks like. If you do it right they won't throw very many. Make your way to the right there will be a few more karate foot soldiers and then we're going to come to a beat up car. That's where the boss is going to be but before we fight him you will need to take out a few more foot soldiers. There's going to be one that comes out of a sewer and you don't want to fall into that sewer, you'll take a damage for that, so stay away from that empty hole. A few more boomerang foot soldiers. If you line up with that wheel well, that'll put you in a good position to try to stun lock Bebop here. But Bebop is much easier to stun lock than Rocksteady. It doesn't have to be as precise. If you just get up close to him and start using your special attack, there's a good chance you might just stun lock him no matter where he is on the screen. So I highly recommend you try stun locking this guy. But let's say you're not very good with the special attack. Jump kicks can take this guy out too. Now, he's a little bit more dangerous than Rocksteady. He can't shoot his gun upwards, which is nice, but he will try to punch you out of the air. So you want to watch out for that. He also seems to do a lot more charge moves than Rocksteady does. Yeah, see, there was that punch out of the air. So I would say that the jump kick method is a bit more dangerous than trying to get him with a stun lock. But if you're not very good at the special attack, this is a viable way to fight the boss. So just keep trying to get him with the jump kicks. Watch out for his counter attack. You just kind of want to be outside of his range right after you hit him so you don't get hit by a punch. Once he's flashing like this, he's almost dead. I think Bebop may be even easier than Rocksteady if you're very good at doing the special attacks. What Ninja Turtle game would be complete if we didn't go down into the sewers? This level is pretty easy, although we will have to deal with some of these knife foot soldiers. Those are dangerous. And you mostly want to stay out of the water. If you go down there, a lot of the time missiles will be fired at you. So those are dangerous. Now these light blue foot soldiers are actually not very threatening, so I wouldn't be too worried about them. Just quickly take them out. And over here we'll encounter Mousers for the first time. The best way to deal with Mousers is to get right up next to this hole and do your special attack as soon as the Mouser pops out. There's going to be five of them each time. If you miss with your special attack, a jump kick is also a good way to deal with a Mouser because they only have three hit points. Of course it can be tricky to hit a Mouser with your jump kick. It has to be very precise. It's much better to get them right at the hole. These foot soldiers with sledgehammers can definitely deal you damage. And while you fight these katana foot soldiers, you'll be safe in the water area. There's no missiles for some reason at this point. It's nice to wait for them to try to jump down, and then they'll be vulnerable as they're moving from the level up above to the water. So, sometimes the high ground isn't better. Yeah, take that Obi-Wan. Take out these Mausers. As usual, there'll be five of them that emerge from the hole. If one of them gets away, you know, chase it down. See that one? That's what happens if he gets away, just go after him. And you want to stay on the left side of this gate until you take out the foot soldiers and then just drop into the water and quickly jump back up. That way you'll avoid the missile and you won't have to deal with the gate at all. The gate is much more impressive in the arcade version. It seems to get a lot more in the way of your fighting. 
but here it's just a minor annoyance. Continue to the right, there will be another Mauser hole here. Five Mausers as usual. Take him out with the special attack. The boss of this stage is going to be Professor Stockman. And he's coming up here, and I would say that Professor Stockman is probably the easiest boss in the entire game. He comes flying out in this weird, like, jetpack pod thing. So you just want to attack him using your special attacks or jump kicks. Either will work. And he will drop an infinite amount of Mousers, so you could actually just sit here and farm those for points. And you can see that we just gained a life for hitting 200 points. Every 200 points you make, you'll gain a life. The actual boss himself won't do you any damage, and it's not very easy to get grabbed by the Mousers. So this guy is a piece of cake. And you'll see here he's been mutated into his fly form. I wonder if that was punishment for being such a weak boss the first time. We're here at our very first NES exclusive level. To get around these ice blocks, I like to jump kick to the upper right corner of the screen as soon as possible, and that seems to work about 95% of the time. Take out these karate foot soldiers with your special attack, just as you have been for the entire game. Whenever the screen starts moving again, you want to stay at the top or the very bottom. That will avoid that snow plow. It kind of reminds me of the one that you have to fight in the snow field in Contra. Over here we'll fight enemies called Frosty the Hitman. I can't make this stuff up, that's what they're really called. They're actually similar to the Roadkill Rodney enemies, in that if you can trap them on the edge of the screen, you can just beat them up with your basic attack and they'll go right down. They have 10 hit points, so it takes 5 hits. And you can set it up with a jump kick, so if they're kind of towards the middle of the screen, just jump kick them to the edge, and then unload on them with your basic attack. These light blue foot soldiers throw snowballs, and they behave very similarly to the knife foot soldiers, so take them seriously. Those mounds of snow you see on the ground are holes, and if you walk over them, you'll fall in and you'll take a damage, so avoid those. That's a trap. I do like that they mix things up here with the snow level. Most of the stages in this game are these alleyways or streets, and they all look very similar. So it's really nice to see something a little bit different. It's a good addition for the NES version. Take out some more of these snow foot soldiers. That one got me with a the snowball. They will try to gang up on you. There's always going to be three of them on the screen whenever there's more to be spawned. Over here are more Frosty the Hitmans. Sponsored by Pizza Hut. What if what they say is true? What if no one can out Pizza the Hut? Just like before, work these Frosties to the end of the screen, and then just unload on them with your basic attacks. Very, very easy. Make your way forward, but be careful because we're going to be assaulted with those ice blocks again. This time I like to use the lower right corner to avoid them. Some more karate foot soldiers. It seems like there's nearly infinite of those. I don't know what kind of factory they have that produces them, but it must be pretty serious. And this is the boss. His name is Tora, and it looks like one of the Coke polar bears somehow found a leather jacket and some Ugg boots. If you keep jump attacking him and stay in the lower part of the screen, He'll run to one of the corners, and then he'll get stuck there. Just keep doing your jump attack and moving back each time. Even if he summons that ice block, if you hit him in the legs with your jump attack, he'll just drop it and you won't get hit. So just trap him in either the lower left or the lower right corner, and just keep giving it to him with the jump kicks, and this guy will go down very easily. That's all you gotta do. And once Tora is defeated, we'll be able to take out his evil weather machine. 
and bring spring to New York. The second part of scene 3 is another level ripped straight from the arcade. These foot soldiers wear red, but they don't seem to be too much more threatening than the standard variety. You can hit them by hitting these road cones at them, so that's a fun way to take out the enemies. Use your special attacks and make your way to the right. Over here we'll find an explosive barrel. If you hit it and then quickly move out of the way, Hopefully you can get some of these katana foot soldiers with it, but be careful, you can also be damaged by that if you're too close. Take these guys out and move to the right. You can also attack the enemy with this 20 mile an hour sign if you want to. Pretty much any signs, cones, fire hydrants are all fair game in this thing. Continue to take out these karate foots. After they're defeated though, you will have to fight some more of the knife throwing variety. And those ones are a bit more dangerous, especially when there's three on the screen at once. Take them out as fast as you can. You certainly don't want to give them a chance to get behind you where they can start throwing the knives. Once they've been cleared, there's another bomb barrel here. That was fairly effective. And keep making your way to the right. More of these simple karate foot soldiers. In the cartoon it seemed like they fought the foot soldiers in every episode, so it doesn't surprise me that there would be a lot of them. You want to kind of jump backwards there to avoid that car. The car was very impressive in the arcade version. Nobody saw that coming the first time. Over here you can fight some more karate foot soldiers. Really get in there with the jump attacks and your special attack. Remember the special attack is AB, AB. And here's another one of those cars. The machine gun foot soldiers are probably some of the most dangerous ones in the entire game. And there's a whole bunch of them here. Make sure to get them as soon as they appear on the screen or they're going to start shooting. Here's another one of those barrels. Bam, three for one. Over here, you can easily take out all three of those guys as soon as they emerge from the back of that truck. It's like they were waiting there all day for you to come by, and then you just take them out in one shot. And over here, we'll come to the boss, Baxter the Fly. The best way to beat Baxter is to get him in either the upper left or the upper right corner and you wait for him to shoot, and as soon as he does, that's when you do your special attack. That way the shots will go right down the sides, and you'll jump up between them and hit Baxter. He'll just stay in this position until he dies. If you need the pizza though, it is over there in the upper right, so don't be afraid to grab it if your energy gets low. And that's it. After all of that, we finally rescued April, and we can jump in our party wagon. I hope April doesn't get salmonella from kissing a turtle. Okay, now we need to get to the secret factory. What secret factory? I've been following the story here. There was a fire. We saved April. We stopped a polar bear and destroyed his weather machine. I don't remember anything about a secret factory. The story in this game is pretty loose, but if I had to guess, I would think that the secret factory must be where they're making all these foot soldiers. And to be honest with you, 
The foot soldiers are very scary when you think about them for a while. They made robots that they were able to teach karate to, and not only that, many of them could wield weapons. They can shoot guns, they can throw and catch boomerangs, I mean that's pretty impressive. As Ninja Turtles, we're skilled martial artists, but think about if you were a human being. How many karate robots can you fight off before you'd finally succumb to them? Yeah, I think we do need to find that secret factory where they're making the foot soldiers, and we need to shut that thing down. Take out these roadkill Rodneys just like you did in stage one. And these foot soldiers are the dynamite variety, so you want to stay close to them. Remember, they don't throw the dynamite right next to themselves. I mean, that would be stupid. They throw it over their heads in an arc. These spear foot soldiers are new for this stage. They're actually very dangerous. They can throw the spear at you, and they'll still have more spears in reserve after that. They have infinite spears, or they can just stab you with it. Stay walking at the top of the screen when you advance the screen in this stage to avoid getting hit by a car. And these foot soldiers will throw bombs at you. You want to wait until they throw the bombs and jump out of the way of them, and then attack them. Treat them in a similar fashion as you would to the foot soldiers that attack you with manhole covers. Except these ones are more dangerous. So let them throw the bomb. And once the bomb has been thrown, they can be taken out just like any other foot soldier. If you stand in this spot up here, you can attack these motorcycle foot soldiers as they drive by, and they will spawn infinitely, so you can just keep attacking them as much as you want and rack up a high score and extra lives. I'm going to move on at this point but you can stay in that one spot and just keep fighting those guys all day if you want to. You definitely want to be at the top of the screen when that car and the motorcycles pass. If you're at the bottom, you may get hit by the motorcycle. More foot soldiers here. Take them out. We definitely have to figure out where the factory is where they're making these things. And here's some of the sledgehammer guys. If you leave the sledgehammer guys on the screen for too long, they will start attacking with the hammer, at which point it may be a good strategy to get behind them. Once they swing the hammer, they'll be stunned for a moment, and attacking them from behind is a good way to finish them off. The dark blue foot soldiers, as usual, are the knife throwing kind. And there's some of the more dangerous ones. There's a whole mess of them here too, so take them out carefully. Once you get to these tires, we're at the end of the stage. The tire throwing foot soldiers are pretty much the same as the ones that throw manholes. So just wait for them to throw the tire. There's going to be one more of those. So let them throw the tire and take them out. And then there will only be a few more karate foot soldiers to finish and this stage will end abruptly. And that's it. It's time for the skateboard level. At the beginning of the level, you'll be assaulted by this Blackhawk attack copter. Use a jump kick to get to the right side of the screen, and then you can attack it with your special attack for extra damage. So jump kick to get to the right, and then do your special attacks. They can drop bombs on you, so you do need to watch out for that, but it only takes a few shots of your special to finish those off. Then you'll be fighting some enemies here on the skateboards. It's not too different from fighting them on foot, but it is a fun experience. I'm glad that they didn't cut this from the NES version. It was one of the most iconic parts of the arcade game. You'll face almost every variety of foot soldier here, and then there will be more of those Blackhawk attack helicopters. In the arcade, there are two different varieties of the attack helicopters, but here in the NES, they're actually combined into the same one. So the ones that can shoot at you can also drop the bombs. You can just use jump kicks if you're not comfortable using your special attacks, so that's another way to finish these guys off. And that's it. 
that's the end of the skateboarding level. We'll get picked up by the party wagon here, and I don't know who's driving this thing, because we're about to go off the road. Oops. Scene 5 is, come on, let's bust this joint. And I'm not sure what that refers to, but it looks like the Mousers got Splinter. So that's a problem we'll need to take care of. Take out these Mousers as they emerge from the hole. There's going to be five of them, just like previously. Some karate foot soldiers will greet you here at the beginning of the scene. But most of the foot soldiers in this stage are going to be the armed variety. So have a relaxing time with these generics while you still can. Some more Mausers will emerge here. Take care of them as they come out of the hole. Oh, we messed that up a bit. Now there's a live Mauser. Got him. Alright. Oh, and another one. And that's what happens if a Mauser gets you. They'll attach to your hand and you'll have to shake them off. Watch out for these knife foot soldiers. Over here, you can use the high ground to your advantage, but these knife guys can actually throw knives that will hit you up there. So I like to stay down here on the bottom for them. Stay up at the top at this point though, you don't want to deal with those lasers at all. Attack these machine gun foot soldiers as soon as they get into your range. And if they're at the bottom, they'll need to jump up to attack you. And as soon as they bounce up, that's a good opportunity to attack them with your special attack. They'll be defenseless as they're jumping up to the higher platform. A couple more generic karate foot soldiers here. Take them down. Once you defeat them and move a bit more to the right though, there's going to be some of the spear variety. Those are a lot more dangerous. Here they are. If they're coming from the right side, you'll want to be down on the lower floor to attack them. But if they're coming from the left, they'll have to jump up to get you. And they'll be vulnerable when they jump up, so you could be on the high ground and take care of some of the foot soldiers that way. Head over to the right, and it's our first time fighting these flippers. You want to pay attention to which order they fell from the sky, because that's the order you need to deal with them in. As soon as you see the head pop out, that's when they'll be vulnerable, and you don't want to leave a flipper on the screen for very long, or it'll start shooting at you with a ray gun. Now, if you do let the flippers get out of control, you want to try to jump kick to get behind them, and then attack with your special attack. We can use this explosive barrel to try to take out the foot soldier that emerges from the window. Take these guys down. And as we make our way over here, one of those transport tubes comes out of the ground, and it seems like we're at the boss, but no. These enemies are called, in the Nintendo Power issue at least, tubular transports. And your best bet is to try to get them with jump kicks. They have six hit points, so if you use jump kicks or the special attack, it will take two hits to defeat either way. So I like to maybe use a special attack in the lower right corner there as soon as they pop out. But then just finish them off with jump kicks. Just keep jump kicking and you shouldn't get hit with their lasers. They're actually fairly easy if you attack them that way. Take out these boomerang foot soldiers. They will try to swarm you, so be cautious. Here's another one of those explosive barrels. Got them. Not bad, we got two with that one. Just keep making your way to the right. Once you defeat all of the karate foot soldiers, you're going to want to move to the top of the screen because we're going to be attacked by another new enemy, the laser pole. These enemies you don't actually have to defeat, but if you can get between them, you can attack them and hit them for a point. 
so it might be worth killing them just to get that point and put it towards getting another extra life. But they don't have to be cleared to move forward. And this boss is called Granitor. I like to try to get him with a few special attacks as he comes down from his elevator. But you mostly want to take this guy out using jump kicks. He has just a ton of hit points. 160. So hitting him for 3 points at a time, it's going to take a while to kill this guy. So you want to conserve your health as much as possible. I like to hit him with a jump kick and then jump kick to the farther part of the screen where I can make more distance between me and Granitor. And that seems to be the safest way to deal with him. You can also try jump kicking and then just turning around in the air and coming back at him. Or trying to use a V type pattern where you hit him from the right and then the left. But hitting him and then just trying to get away is the safest way to fight this guy. That way you can avoid getting hit by his retaliatory swing and you'll also be able to avoid the fire that he shoots. So just keep using your jump kicks and whittle him down. You don't want to take a bunch of damage. Whenever he hits you it definitely hurts so watch out and don't forget there's the pizza slice up there. So if you get low on health, you could run up there and grab the pizza. And what I usually like to do against Granitor is just keep working him with the jump kicks until I get low on health. And then I'll run up and grab the pizza and then just start smashing him with my special attack. And that's a good way to finish him off. You can kind of go toe to toe with him for a few shots if you think he's low on health. And with that, Splinter has been rescued, and we can go down into the elevator. It's time to defeat the enemy's ninja magic. This is the other NES exclusive stage, so this one is definitely not in the arcade version, and it's probably one of the more interesting stages in the entire game. There are a lot of weird enemy designs in here. It's not all just foot soldiers in this one. This is also probably the most difficult stage in the game. The Technodrome can be tough, but it's mostly just foot soldiers and bosses. This one has these blade enemies, which have 8 HP. Which means you'll need to get them with 2 shots of your special attack. The best way to deal with these guys is to try to hit them on the edge of the screen. That way you'll be able to get them twice without them being able to attack you. Make your way forward. Some more karate foot soldiers will emerge and try to fight you. But by this time, these guys are no problem. They're just extra points in the score. Now over here on the right, we're going to see some foot soldiers pop out of holes in the ground. Make sure you don't fall in those holes, you will take damage for that. Clear these enemies and move forward. A whole row of foot soldiers pops out of the floor here. I like to stay at the bottom of the screen at this point so that I don't get hit into any of the holes. And once they're cleared, head on over to the right. You can use this candle as a weapon, just like you would with a street sign. The enemies are just pouring into the dojo. Take them out one by one, or if you can get them together, two or three at a time. With your special attack, you'll be able to easily clear these enemies out. And over here is where it gets dangerous. When you see the glass window here, this is where there's bamboo poles that come out of the ground. So you want to be jumping and wait until they pop out of the ground a couple times and try to get to the end of the mat. So you want to get onto this wooden boardwalk part 
and get off of the bamboo mat area. That will mean that you're safe. This enemy is called Vincent Van Growl, and the trick is to hit him right as he comes out from the side of the screen, so just keep hitting him there. Use your basic attack, don't try to use your special. Same thing with this one. Catch him right as you see the head appear. Now if he tries to jump over you, you'll need to back up a bit and try to hit him back to the side of the screen. But these guys seem very difficult until you get the rhythm of it. And once you can just easily hit him with your basic attacks as the head pops out of the side of the screen, you'll be able to easily remove those Vincent Van Growls. And here is yet another new enemy type, the Venom Scorpion. These ones can be taken out by attacking them on the side of the screen. They're actually very skittish and will bounce away from you if you try to attack them in the middle of the screen, so you want to try to work them over to the edge as best you can. He kind of runs away from you, but once you get him onto the edge, you can rapidly attack him with your basic attack. Those guys have 12 hit points, so it'll take 6 basics to take them down. There's a few more of those blade enemies here. You can see the difference. I hit him with a jump kick instead of a second special attack, so it took a third hit to kill him. That's why you want to try to do two specials, and if you can group them together, even better. Continue on to the right. There will be a few more karate foot soldiers here, but we're getting close to the end, and there's going to be a pizza slice soon, so if you're low on health, it won't be long until you get bailed out by some pizza. So just hang in there and carefully take out these generic karate foot soldiers. They're not that tough. A good way to deal with enemies in almost all beat em up games is to use the Y axis to your advantage. Enemies will need to move up or down the screen to get to you, and they'll almost always be vulnerable when they're moving in an up and down motion, or it seems like when they're moving from left to right, they can still attack. So try to not ever be on the same plane as enemies, that's just good advice. And here's the boss, the Shogun Warrior. The Shogun Warrior is fairly easy to attack with a left then right V pattern of flying kicks. But whenever the head comes off, that's when it gets tough. You need to do jump kicks while trying to avoid the head, and that's something that's easier said than done. You want to prioritize avoiding the head though, so if your jump kick kind of goes over the Shogun and doesn't hit, but it does avoid the head, that's okay. Because the head will eventually go back onto the body, and you can get easy hits again. And of course, don't forget there's that pizza there if you haven't eaten it yet. So if your energy gets low, you can go grab it. The Shogun only has 80 HP, so if you get a good rhythm and can avoid that flying head, he's not that hard to defeat. And we'll enter this trap door, and beneath it is the Technodrome. It's time. This is the final stage. We gotta find the Technodrome. We're, we're inside of it. We found it. That's like not being able to see the forest through the trees. Well, in any case, you're immediately attacked by some boomerang foot soldiers as soon as you get inside, so be on your toes and ready for it. Once again, there's some more of these laser poles. If you just get behind them, you can just walk on but of course you can fight them and get the points for defeating them. Make sure to take out the one on the right first so you don't get shot by it while you're trying to hit the one on the left. Over here, nine of those white dressed katana foot soldiers will attack you. And these ones seem to be a bit more aggressive. They're always jump attacking. Watch out for that laser. I like to stay on the right side of the screen because it gives you a little bit more space to work with. Make your way over to the right. There will be some nice generic karate foot soldiers for you to fight here. Keep padding onto your score. Maybe you'll get to 800. 
and get another extra life. Now over here, we'll want to get to the top of the screen and just start jump kicking so that we can destroy as many of these blizzard blowers as possible. Don't be caught off guard by them. As soon as you finish off the karate foot soldiers in the other area, make your way to the top of the screen and just start jump kicking to the right. That will make sure you don't get caught by that first blizzard blower and end up frozen in a block of ice. Very annoying. Our favorites, the knife foot soldiers, are over here. It's no secret that your special attacks will remove them very easily. And here we'll fight more of those flippers. Remember to pay attention to the order they appeared on the screen, and you want to attack them as soon as you see the head pop out. So wait for the head to pop out and then move to the next one that appeared. Remember, if they get out of control, the best way to fight them is to do a jump kick and get behind the flippers and hopefully get an attack in once you're behind them. Over here are some laser poles. They're optional, but of course you can fight them for some points. Alright, take them out with your special attack. Over here we'll fight some of those machine gun foot soldiers. Possibly the most dangerous kind. Also be aware that they can hit you with the gun and not just shoot you with it. It's easy to forget that whenever you're right up next to them. They're very aggressive. Just keep taking them out. Over here are more katana foot soldiers. And another one of those lasers. This time you want to stay on the left side. There's a lot more room to work with over here. You don't want to get electrocuted by that laser, so just hang out over on the left. Oh, that was a close one. Once those guys are removed, make your way to the top of the screen and just start jump kicking in the upper right corner to take out some blizzard blowers. And over here, we're going to engage an elevator, which will take us down to the bottom floor. You don't want to be at the very top whenever these bowling balls start coming down. The first one hits up there, but then you can move to the top and wait until you see that one there and move down and go all the way to the bottom. So just wait for a few balls and down here there will be a slice of pizza that you can grab and refill your health, but take out these machine gun foot soldiers first unless you're down to your very last point of energy. Take these guys out. This is going to be your last chance to refill your health before we have to fight the first of three bosses. And you'll need to collect the pizza now. You won't be able to advance the screen enough to get more enemies on. Here's some of our roadkill Rodney friends. They're very easy to fight down here, just get them onto the edge of the screen and light them up with some basic attacks. Of course they'd have the knife throwing ones down here. You want to try to preserve as much of your health as you can for the boss, so be careful with any enemies that you fight in this area. Take out these roadkill Rodneys. The Roadkill Rodneys were very annoying in the arcade version, but they're not that big of a deal here on the NES. We have a few Sledgehammer foot soldiers to fight. They're pretty easy. This last attack of Karate Foot Soldiers is the only thing between us and General Trag. Well, that and the door. So whenever these guys are finished off, you're going to move over to the right, but don't be in front of the door. Yes. It will come flying off and damage you. General Trag isn't too different from the Granitor boss that we fought a couple levels ago. 
The big difference here is that there's that laser door. So you want to stay at the bottom of the screen. That way if you do get hit by general drag, you won't get hit into that laser beam. Just keep doing the jump kicks. I like the kind that go from left to right and then right to left. So make that V pattern on him. He'll try to swipe at you, but most of the time he won't be able to hit you. And instead of firing a flamethrower like Granitor, he shoots a missile which will explode on contact. Very dangerous. Just stay down at the bottom. Keep jump kicking him in the V pattern. And he has a ton of hit points. He has 150. But it's actually less than Granitor had. So this guy is actually a bit easier in my opinion. You'll see that he starts flashing already. The problem with this guy is there are two more bosses after you fight him. So you want to save all of your lives for the final part. But you will get your health refilled. Once General Trag is defeated, it's time to move on to the final room. Coming through the portal, it's Krang. Krang is probably the most obnoxious boss in the entire game. He has 220 hit points, so he's just a massive damage sponge. I like to try to get him with a few of my special attacks as he moves down the screen, but the most effective way to fight Krang is to get him with some jump kicks. Whenever I'm doing my jump kicks on Krang, I'm trying to aim for that big red shoulder pad behind his head. If you can hit him right around there, it will be difficult for Krang to counterattack you with his own kick or the laser beams from his eyes. Of course, all of that is easier said than done. And sometimes, even if you land a nearly perfect kick, he'll still get you with a counterattack. Whenever I'm fighting Krang, it just seems like it takes forever. There's so many hits that you need to get on him, and he has so many dangerous attacks. You're just hoping that each time when you hit him, and he starts flickering, that he stays flashing after you move away. But it doesn't happen for a long time. So, take your time with Krang. You need to be patient, you don't want to just start going nuts. I mean, I do have five lives at this point, so if I wanted to go right up on top of Krang and just start smashing my special attack, I could, but Shredder can kill you in a single hit if you're not careful. So it's important to save as many lives as you can and try to conserve them when fighting Krang. Although, I gotta admit, it can be very tough to beat Krang without dying at least once. We're having a very good run here. Be conservative. Whenever he's doing that move where he's moving his arms up and down in the air, don't attack him when he's doing that. You'll almost definitely get counterattacked. Krang is flashing now. It won't be much longer until this battle has ended. Just keep patiently attacking him in the shoulder pad with your jump kicks. Try to avoid the eye beams. And finally you'll hear his death scream. He'll say, I'm invincible. And then it will be time. Time to face the final boss. That's right. It's time for Shredder. As Shredder appears, you want to line up with this line on the floor. Let's see where I'm at in relationship to that line. If you're in this position over on the right side of the screen, Shredder's demutation ray won't hit you over here. And one of the Shredders will almost inevitably walk over into this position. And you can just start jump kicking him. You want to wait until after he attacks to hit the kick button in midair. So you jump wait for the sword swing, and then press B to kick. And you just keep doing that. Now watch, sometimes Shredder will like crouch down after being hit, and so you need to adjust your timing a little bit. As long as you're in this spot, you won't get hit by that ray, 
and as long as you don't notice Shredder's helmet pop off right away, now if the helmet pops off pretty early, that means you've been fighting the fake Shredder, and you need to actually be attacking the other one, although if you remove the fake Shredder's helmet, he won't be able to do the demutation ray, and that's another way you can fight Shredder. But trying to move him into this position is definitely your best chance at winning. It takes a lot of hits to kill Shredder, Eventually his helmet is going to pop off here and then the fake shredder will stop doing that demutation attack. There it is. And that means it'll only take a few more hits to kill shredder. He doesn't do a flashing thing like the other bosses do. And that's it. Shredder is defeated and the Technodrome is destroyed. We've done it. We've beaten Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Freaked the foots, mangled the Mausers, and totaled the Technodrome. That's turtle power. But what about the Shredder and Krang? Burned to toast, vaporized to milkshake, or escaped to Dimension X? Until we know none of us can sleep safely in our beds. Er, shells. And that's it. Roll the credits. Well, I hope this video was able to help you defeat the Shredder and stop his army of killer karate robots. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more ninja warlords for us to defeat. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.